What it do, what it do, what it do, it's yours truly, Miss Telefro. Y'all know we still at it, round one of the NBA playoffs. This is the last game one to take place. It's our night game, it was a TNT game. It is the Utah Jazz in Houston for games one and two, taking on the Houston Rockets. Trying to steal one was Donovan Mitchell and company. I'm gonna be honest with you, I just don't think Coach Schneider came out with the right game plan to be James Harden and the Houston Rockets. Uh, let's just get into the highlight. We'll come back and give some closing remarks here. So early in the first, it was obvious what Utah planned on doing to James Harden. If you look closely, they're playing James Harden strong side. Obviously, he's left-handed. And they're literally just giving him the right side. Here's the problem with that. James Harden is not only one of the best scorers in the NBA. He doesn't get enough credit for being one of the best playmakers and passers in the NBA. He's made himself into that under Mike D'Antoni's offense. I guess the Utah Jazz just thought James Harden was just going to sit back, take jumpers all day, and, and, and take him off his right side. But no, he attacked the lane, made plays for himself, and made plays for others, and he was dishing that rock all over the place. P.J. Tucker had a nice first half as he drills another three. Hard. Look, again, left side is blocked. Rubio had the uh, assignment of hard a lot in this game. You can't go left, but we're literally giving you the right side. No, no type of effort from that Houston second line of defense. Again, right side is open. James Harden makes the right play. Finish there from Clint Capella. Again, new defender. Giving him the right side still. He's going to knock home that three every time. More Rubio. Again, giving Harden that right side. Daniel House hits the rim and attacks for two. And the Houston Rockets easily take care of business in game one against the Utah Jazz. I hope that is not more of signs to come if you're a Utah Jazz fan. That wasn't competitive at all. You know, we know when it gets to Utah. The, uh, the Jazz are going to compete better than what they did in Houston at least game one. But hopefully we get a better game two in Houston. Let's look at this highlight a little bit some more. L look at this though. Like this is crazy to me. Look, Rubio is literally just playing off the hip. I get it. You don't want Harden to go left. But I don't know if this is the right game plan. I was listening to Kenny Smith and TNT tonight as they had this game. And Kenny suggested... He'd rather Harden take 40 shots and get his 30, 40, 50 points like that over what he did tonight. He was 11 or 26 from the field, had 29 points, 10 assists, and 8 rebounds. Again, forcing somebody to have 29 points on 26 shots is not bad, but you also allow Harden to get 10 assists. And the way he got those assists was literally slithering in the defense, attacking and making plays from others. Those assists, like that helped P.J. Tucker have a good game. He had 11 points, three threes. Eric Gordon had a good game, 17 points. Chris Paul didn't necessarily have a great game, but I'm saying like, yo, the way Harden played this game, if the Utah Jazz continue with this strategy, I think they're going to catch Harden off maybe one or two nights. But overall, I think he's going to torch this defense and... They won't make it past, didn't they get the five games last year? Yeah, they won't make it past the five games from last year if, if they're going to play Harden uh, strong side on that left side and, and send him in a Rudy Gobert because he's too good at making decisions. He, he, Clint Capella and Harden are entirely too smart. They're going to make Gobert come up far enough that that way he can either drop it down in the Clint Capella or go up top depending on how Rudy Gobert plays it. And if Rudy Gobert continues to sag off in that lane, Harden has a good enough floater, you know, to, to get off from the paint. Like, I don't think that's the strategy that I would I would use on James Harden. That just didn't feel right. That felt too easy. Kenny said something else that I thought was very telling. I don't know if he was joking or serious. It could be either the two. He was like, yo, James Harden's probably not even tired after that game. He might go hit V live after the game. He might go hit a Houston club with his friends. You, you ain't make Harden as tired as possible. We know dude had a taxing regular season, literally having to carry the Rockets on his back for much of the season. Fam, that's probably one of the easiest games James Harden had in the last couple months. That ain't it, 
Chief. I just called Chief, and he said that ain't the strategy to beat the Houston Rockets. Yeah, game two, I expect the Jazz to make some type of adjustment. Again, I'm not saying don't play the strong side, but that second line of defense got to be there. Like You can't do that. You cannot just give him the lane like that. He is going to torch you. And that's what happened in game one. And the Houston Rockets were able to blow that thing open. 122 to 90 is the final score. We'll see what happens game two, man. James Harden, big game. 29 points, 8 rebounds, 10 assists. I'm out. I came from nothing, but I want everything God has for me. I interview celebrities. I talk sports. I still represent the culture. I got the kids that you are now tuned in. Tuned in. Yo, we locked in right now, Mr. Telefair. Mr. Telefair. Mr. Telefair. Mr. Telefair. Mr. Telefair. Shout out to Mr. Telefair. You're watching Mr. Telefair TV. Mr. Telefair TV? Here with the Triple B's. You can't do nothing but win.